Hi, and welcome to my guide of Legends Quest. The quest requirements are Heroes Quest, Family Quest, Shiloh Village, Underground Boss, Waterfall and have at least 107 quest points. For the stat requirements that are 56 Magic, 52 Mining, 50 Agility, Crafting, Smithing, Strength, Thieving and Woodcutting, 45 Herblore and 42 Prayer. For the items needed that are a bunch, you'll need approximately 3 Charcoals, 5 pieces of Papyrus, 2 Lockpicks, 2 Golden Bars, potentially 4 or 6 depending on your smithing level, a Hammer, a Rope, any kind of Pickaxe, a Rune or a Dragon Axe, 2 Unpowered Orbs, and then twice the runes to cast any kind of Charge Orb spell. I'm going to use Charge Water Orb. They all need to have one vial of water. You will need to have one cut opal, jade, red topaz, sapphire, emerald, ruby and diamond. You will also need one soul, mind, earth and two law runes. For the teleports I'm going to bring along one teleportation method to Camelot. Then you will also need two teleports to Shallow Village. How I'm going to get there is I'm going to bring along two teleportation methods to Ardoin. Then I'm going to take a couple of hundreds GPs to take the boat from Ardoin to Brimhaven. And then I'm going to take a cart to Shallow Village. And then also you will need to have a teleportation method back to the Legends Guild to complete your quest. I'm also going to bring along one Tybro one Eye Teleport Squall to get the Adrigal and Snakeweed herbs quicker. You could get these two herbs before the quest, but I'm going to get them during the quest. You will also need some food, armor and weapon to kill various monsters, like three demons of combat 187. These demons will only use melee when you are up close, else it will use magic. You will also need to have some food to pass aggressive jungle wolves and savages. Then you will also need approximately 5 prayer potions for the 3 boss fights, as well as if you would fail to bless a bowl during the quest, this will reduce 5 prayer points and you will need to have at least 42 prayer points before you're able to bless that bowl. Then you will also need some weight reducing armor because we will need to run a lot during this quest. And I'm also going to bring along like 1 stamina potion but my inventory is full so I have that in my bank. And then lastly, if you have a low strength level, I would say below level 55, you might as well just need a strength potion. And if you have a low mining level, I'd say around level 50, just like me, I'm going to bring along two Dwarven Stouts. Now for the start of the quest, you don't need all these items. I'm just going to deposit everything. I'm going to take approximately 2000 GP to travel myself to Shiloh Village. I'm going to need at least two empty inventory slots and let's go to the Legends Guild. How to get to the Legends Guild? You could either use the fairy ring and use the code BLR. And that will get you to the fairy ring just next to the uh, Legends Guild. Else you could simply use a drone teleport, follow the path east and just keep following this path and you should end up near the Legends Guild. Alright, here let's talk to one of the Legends guards. Select the third option, can I speak to someone in charge? First option, can I go on the quest? Select the second option, yes, I will visit the Great Vizier Urkel. And he will let you enter the Legends Guild. Let's go north. And you and here are two buildings. We will need to enter the building on the western side of the road. In this office you will find Urkel. Talk to him. Select the first option, yes, actually, what is involved? Select the first option again, yes, sounds great. And you will get some notes. You will also give us three tasks which we will need to complete. First, you, if you want some extra papyrus, you could take it from the table. 
and then also on the northern side of the wall we will find a cupboard. Open it, then search and you should find a machete. Next let's go back to Ardoin and let's go to Shiloh village. Because now we will need to enter the Kazari jungle. I just keep going south and west of the uh, Witch Haven dungeon sign. You will find a transportation sign on the docks. Let's pay fair Captain Bar by Navy, Captain Bar Navy, and he should take us to Brimhaven for 30 GP. Okay, let's cross the gangplank, go south, and because we have all completed the quest Shallow Village at the at the transportation sign, just a little bit south of the docks, we should find. Hey 80 right click and pay fare or board the travel card. Yes, let's go to Shallow Village. When we've arrived, let's go to the bank and grab some stuff that we will need for this part of the quest. Okay, for this part we don't need our coins anymore. We will need to have our notes, our papyrus and our machete. We will also need to have our axe, then also three charcoal, our five papyruses, then also we will need to have two golden bars, where are they, then also a hammer, some food to pass aggressive monsters between combat 46 and 90, I'm going to take like five monkfish. One teleportation method to Camelot, I'm just going to bring the runes. And if you're just here to enter the Kazari jungle, for any other reason besides the quest, just bring some food, an axe and a machete, and then you should be fine. Besides that, I'm just going to take my weapon, my weight reducing armor, and let's also take like one stamina potion. And let's exit Shiloh village by going through the gates by passing through the zombies search the broken cart to get to the other side then let's go south southwest of the quest sign and here we should find a jungle forester let's talk to her select the first option how do i get in the kazari jungle select the first option that you have a map let's select the third option okay thanks Let's now turn our camera south and south of the jungle forester or near her we will find a couple of trees which we can uh, chop down as well as some bushes which we can chop down. Next to the rock there are two trees. Let's stand between them and let's chop down the jungle bush. You will just use your machete and your axe to get through then just keep going south. Take one square south, chop down the jungle bush. Wait a second. For your character to do the animation, take another step forward, turn your camera a little bit and try to take another st step south, then one step more south, chop down the final jungle tree. And we've entered the Kazari jungle. Okay here, if you want to continue to complete this quest, you may drop your regular logs. Let's turn our camera north and let's go east. We will now need to go to the east coast of the Kazari jungle. Just pause the wolves, pause the agility shortcut, just keep going east until you see some water. Maybe drink a stamina potion dose, this might help. The jungle is quite large. Okay, I see the shore. You don't need to go directly next to the water, just be on the eastern side of the jungle. Then just right click on the Redimus nodes, the blue scroll, and complete it. Now you just need to see what is now currently in your chat box or what message you have gotten. If you have failed, you will either ruin a papyrus or you would break a charcoal. 
and then you'll just need to right click and complete the map again to try again. If you successfully mapped the eastern side of the jungle, let's go west and go to the center. Just keep going west, pass through some, uh, a lot of trees. Then here we should, f I actually found a uh, totem pole. If I look on the minimap, I am pretty much near the center of the jungle. Let's right click and complete the notes. Click to continue. Hopefully it will work. And yes, I have just mapped the middle part of the jungle. Let's continue running west and do this with the final uh, yeah, part of the jungle, the western one. The success rate of mapping the jungle all depends on your crafting skill. So let's complete the final part of this uh, jungle area, complete it, continue, is it completed, and yes I have mapped all three of them successfully without failing even once. Once finished let's go north, northeast and we will now need to exit the jungle. Let's try to chop down some bushes or uh, chop down some jungle trees and let's exit the Kazari jungle. And if you are blocked just take one path just take one path away and try another one. Okay, when you have exited the Kazari jungle, you may drop your logs. You don't need them for this quest. Let's talk to any jungle forester. Well, actually just right click on the notes and use them on the jungle forester. You'll show him that you've completed the map. Let's select the first option. Yes, go ahead and make a copy. And he will give you a bull roar. Now because we have our bull roar right now, we will not need our charcoal or our papyrus anymore. If you want, you could drop them. Now also, do not swing your bull roar next to the jungle foresters, else, else they will attack you. Alright, let's now go back inside the Kazari jungle. So let's try to cut down some jungle trees or some jungle bushes to get back in there. You can't reach. Let's take a step away. Okay, I've made it back in the jungle. Let's swing our bull roar. You will either spawn an NPC called Kuzujo or a uh, monster will attack you. Just run away from the monster if it's attacking you and try to swing your bull roar again. Okay, Gunjo has been summoned to me. Let's talk to him. Let's select the first option. I was hoping to attract attention to a native. Select the first option again that you want to have some friendly relations. First option again, can you get your people together? First option again, what can we do? First option, how to make it a totem pole. First option again, that you will earn, that you will release a um, Gadulu. Alright, now the NPC has been disappeared and he has asked us to release his tribe's shaman. Let's go west. We will now need to go to the northwestern part of the jungle. And there you should find a dungeon sign. Apparently it isn't marked with a dungeon sign, but northwest of the jungle we should find a couple of rocks on our minimap. The one that looks like a depleted ore rock, search it. Wait a second, click to continue and yes, crawl through. And you will squeeze through the crevice. Let's go a little bit southwest into the dungeon. 
and here we will find Ungadulu in a flaming octagon. Right click on the firewall and investigate it. This way we are able to talk to him. Select the first option, how can I extinguish the flames? First option, how do I get the pure water? Let's right click and investigate the firewall again. So we are able to talk to him once again, but this time let's select the second option, who he is. Then you can just ask how to get the pure water once again and he will ask you to leave him. Okay, let's go back outside. Let's go back northwest. Crawl through the cave entrance. Let's see that there are not too many NPCs near us and let's swing the bull roar. And hopefully this will summon Guzojo. If not, let's run away from the aggressive NPC. I suggest running west to the shore, there are not many monsters. Let's swing the bull roar. Okay, now there is an angry chicken behind me. Let's swing the bull roar once again. And I have summoned Kuzoju. Okay. Great. It's annoying. Okay, when you finally be able to talk to Kuzoju, let's select the third option that you need some pure water to douse the flames. Select the first option, a medal of the sun. What is that? Let's select the first option, where can I get this medal? Select the second option, what kind of vessel is it? And he will give you a sketch. Then select the first option, how can I bless the vessel? Second option, okay, thanks for your help. Okay, when he's gone, let's look at the sketch. Click to continue. And now let's go to Camelot. I brought my Camelot teleports and let's go to Sears Village. I'm now going to the uh, Elemental Workshop building. And in that building we will find some uh, anvils. We we'll just need to go to any kind of anvils and use our gold bars on them with your hammer in your inventory, with also with the sketch and we should now be able to make a golden bowl. Let's say yes to continue and make the gold bowl. Once we have this, let's go to Catherby or the Sears Village Bank. Let's grab some coins and let's go to Brimhaven by chartering a boat. And then from there, we are just going to go back to uh, Shallow Village by taking the cart from Brimhaven to Shallow Village. I will see you back at the Shallow Village Bank to prepare for our next part of the quest. Oh, one last thing. You will need to have at least 42 prayer points before you're able to attempt to bless this gold bowl. Either you will need to recharge them with some prayer potions or just go to the Sears Village Altar next to the yew trees and recharge it that way. I will see you back in Shadow Village. Alright, back in the Shallow Village Bank, let's prepare for our next part of the quest. We will not need our coins anymore. We also don't need our hammer. If you have a low strength level, like 55 or lower, bring a strength potion. If you have a low mining level, around level 50, let's take one or two dwarven stouts. Then you also need to have your remedies notes. You don't need your sketch anymore because we have already made our golden bowl. We will also need to have a rune axe, a machete, the bull roar. Then we should also need to have, let's say, two lockpicks, any kind of pickaxe. Then all our gems, a opal, jade, red topaz, sapphire, emerald, ruby, diamond. Our smell runes, which is a soul rune, one mind rune, one earth and two law runes. We will also need to have some food and a weapon to path aggressive level 83 bats in a multi-combat area zone. 
And it's also possible that you will need to kill one to get to the next area. I'm just going to bring along my weight reducing armor, my whip and my nate is not helm. Then also you need to have some food, armor and weapon to kill a combat 187 demon. Which at the start of the fight will drain your prayer points once. So you might also want to bring a couple of prayer potions, let's say like two. So I think I'm also going to bring along some defensive gear like a obi cape and a dragon chainmail. Besides from that let's take like one prayer potion. And also if you would fail to bless the golden bowl you will lose 5 prayer points and you will need to have at least 42 prayer points before you're able to bless this again. So you might also want to bring a second prayer potion. Okay, then besides from all this stuff you will also need to have like one empty inventory slot. And let's return to the Kazari jungle. Going to go through the gate, passing the zombies. Searching the broken cot. Returning to the female jungle forester. Let's try to get back in the Kazari jungle between the two trees. Let's chop down the bush. One, this one. Okay. One step south. Chop down the other bush. Chop down this tree. South of you, dumbass. Other side. Okay. Let's drop the locks. Okay, here are no NPCs around. Let's use the bull roar to summon Kuzoju. Okay, let's talk to him. Select the first option. Yes, I would like to bless my gold bowl. And he will help you to bless the golden bowl. If you see that you've lost 5 prayer points, that will mean that you've failed to bless it. Then just say the first option again. Yes, I will try to bless it again. And attempt number two. Once again, did not work. Yes, bless. Try again to bless it. Okay, this is getting annoying. Attempt number four. My prayer points have reached below level 42, so I will need to bring a prayer potion to be able to try to bless the bowl again. Seriously? Attempt number 6? Okay, the bowl has been blessed. Let's select the third option that you need some pure water to douse the magic flames. Third option, okay thanks. And he will disappear. Let's check our minimap and we'll need to go to a water sign that is pretty much in the center of the Kazari jungle, north of the rare tree sign that we should find something grey bluish, that is where we'll need to go. From where I currently am it is a little bit southwest, so just keep going southwest until you see that grey square north of the rare tree sign. Let's go towards it and here we'll find a water pool. North of the water pool we will find some tall reeds. Right click and use your machete on the tall reeds and you should get a hollow reed. Let's use this on the pool of water and you will be able to get some water into your golden bowl. And you will also destroy your hollow reed. Okay, let's go back northwest and we will now need to return to the uh, fire octagon. Let's go back northwest and try to look for some rocks on our minimap. Keep going west. Let's try to search those deplanted ore rocks. Yes, 
try again to squeeze through the crevice. Once you are back here, let's go east. We will now need to go to the uh, northeastern part of this dungeon. And here we should find a bookcase. Actually, two bookcases. We will need to search the eastern one, which one is empty. Let's right click and search it. Select yes please to be able to squeeze through the crevice behind it. And now we are on the second part of the dungeon. Let's go a little bit south and we should find a gate sign. Let's use the lockpick on the ancient wooden gate. Click to continue and if you will get a message that... But if you will get this message but you fail to pick the lock just exit the dialog by clicking on the floor for example and you will not break your lockpick. This way you are still able to use the same lockpick to try to, to pick lock the lock once again. Okay, you here click and you will be able to get through this gate. Next, let's just click on the boulder to try to smash it to bits. If you fail, you will lose one mining level and if you have and you will need to have at least level 50 to be able to smash these two bits. Let's do this with the two other boulders to get to the final gate. And for this Asian gate we will just need to open it. Try to open it by using your strength. You will need to have at least 50 strength to be able to force this door open. If you fail, you will lose 3 strength levels and just try again. If you have a quite low strength level, you might need some strength potions. Okay, now you are in a dark area with a couple of Comet 83 paths. Let's just go south and pass them. Just ignore those paths and just keep going south until you see a corridor. Follow this path and you should see another uh, gate sign on your minimap. Let's right click on that jacked wall and jump over it. Next, let's go uh, west to the western side of the wall. We should find another red line on our minimap. Turn our camera west and we should find a black square on the wall. This is a uh, marked wall. Right click on it and search. Yes, and we are now able to read the riddle. And now we will need to use the runes in the correct order on the marked wall, so it spells out smell. First the S, so let's use a soul rune on the marked wall. Then the M for mind rune, use it on the wall. The E for earth, use it on the wall. And then a double L, so two law runes on the wall. Click to continue and say yes, go through. You are now in the next area, which has seven pools, and in these seven pools we will find stalagmites, or they are actually called carved rocks. Now we will need to use a specific cut gem on the carved rocks in these pools to be able to unlock this part as well. So let's first go to the most southeastern pool, in the southeastern corner. North of the pool there will find your carved rock. On this one we will need to use our sapphire on this carved rock. Next let's go west, a little bit southwest on that sapphire pool. On this pool we will need to use a diamond on that carved rock. Next let's go north, directly north and north of the diamond pool we will need to use a red topaz on this carved rock. Balance it on this carved rock and then let's go southwest. West of the red topaz, we sh on this diamond we will need to use a ruby on the carved rock. Then let's go north. North of the uh, ruby pool, on this one we should use a jade on this carved rock. Then let's go west of the jade pool and here we should find, and here we should use a emerald on this pool just west of the jade. And the north, the most northern pool, we should use the opal. Okay, balance it on this rock. And this should trigger a cutscene. Okay, 
a lot of air blasts and after this animation of air blasts has been done we should find a book of bindings Okay, when you have the binding book, let's take it and read it. Just close it. And now we will actually need to return to the octagon firewall. So let's go back to the ether side of the wall and just use the marked wall to be able to go back. And now just go through the dungeon once again, jumping over the jacked wall, passing all of those uh, level 83 bats. Now we just need to pass through these ag aggressive bats in a multi-area zone. Let's try to push this gate. Now this might be a problem because we will have to go through a bit of a dialogue before we're able to open this gate. So maybe run around the rock to be able to get around these bats and try to open the gate and it doesn't work. Okay, I'm just trying to lure all these bats south of the dungeon because I'm not able to open the door and they just will not go south. Try to run to the gates. Yes, yes, yes. Open, open. Motherfucker. Okay, there's no other option than to, to kill these death wings before we're able to open this door. Okay, okay, let's quickly get through this door. Okay, went through. Let's smash these three boulders. Hopefully not fail too often. Okay, let's open the ancient gate. We don't need to use the lockpick to go through. Let's go back to the uh, crevice. So we're able to get back to the final area. Right click and search it. We'll pick us. Why is there a look at option? Let's go back to the octagon. And now it is time to fight the first combat 187 demon. Now this demon will only use his melee when you are up close. If you're standing a bit from afar, he will use his magic attacks. Let's use our golden ball on the firewall. To enter the octagon, now let's go to Undagulu, do not attack him, just right click on your book of bindings and use it on the NPC. This will spawn the demon. Okay, let's kill the demon. He will start by draining your prayer points, so if you would need to use your prayer points, just, just drink some prayer potions to restore them. I'm just going to try to flicker it. He isn't really that hard to kill, depending on your combat level. And especially if you have protect from melee. Now if you have magic or range at, you can easily just use protect from magic and stand behind this desk and use that as a safe spot from his uh, melee attack. But you still need to use some prayer potions because he will use his magic, so... It isn't really that beneficial. Okay, when the first combat 187 has been defeated, he will cast Fire Blast spell at you. This cannot be negated, so the max hit is 16. Be sure that your health is at least 16 before you've defeated the demon. Let's maybe heal up. So let's now right click on Ungadulu and talk to him. So let's select the first option that you need to collect some yummy tree seeds. And he will give you three of them. Let's right click on them and drop them because if they would rot we will need to have some more. So let's talk to him again. 
Let's select the first option again and he should give us three more seats. Let's pick up the ones that we have just dropped, then talk to him once again. Then select the second option, how do I get out of here? Then select the second option again, what will you do now? Third option, okay thanks. And now Umladulu has cast a spell on us, so we have some protection against the firewall. So let's right click and investigate the firewall. So we're able to pass through it. And let's go back northwest and exit uh, this dungeon to get back to the Kazari jungle. Okay, here back on the surface, let's maybe check our world map. I will now need to go back to the water font. So it is north of the rare tree sign in the center of the Kazari jungle. So let's run east, southeast, but mainly east. I'm just going to go a little bit to the center of the jungle. And from there I'm going east until I see that rare tree sign. Let's go towards that pool and once we are there, let's use our golden bowl, which still has some holy water in it, and use it on the three seeds. You will place the seeds in the golden bowl and you will germinate all of your three seeds. When you are germinated, let's use our machete on the tall reeds to get another hollow reed. Let's use this on the water pool to fill our bowl again, but then you will see that the water has disappeared from the water pool. Let's use our bull roar and try to summon Kuzoju. Let's talk to him. Select the first option that the pool has dried up. Select the second option where is the source of the spring of the pure water. Select the third option that you've searched the catacombs thoroughly and you've found nothing else. Select the option if I went to search for the source, could you help me? Then select the fourth option, will I need this potion? I feel brave enough as I am. And then select the fourth option again, okay, thanks for your help. Okay, so right now we will need to have a potion of courage before we are able to get through the next part of the dungeon. So we're able to unblock the water source, which is blocking the water flow to get some more holy water. So we are able to plant our tree seeds. So first, let's go back north. And we will now need to go to Shallow Village Bank. Or any other bank, it doesn't really matter. Now we just need to get our Bravery Potion made. And to get this we will need to have a Snakeweed Herb as well as Advigal Herb. These are the same herbs that we have gotten for the uh, Jungle Potion quest. The snakeweed herb is found somewhere west-southwest of uh, Taibo Wanai village. And then for the uh, agricultural herb it is uh, near the harpy bug swarms. So since I have not gotten them before the quests start, I'm going to my bank and I'm going to deposit... And I'm going to deposit everything for now. First I'm going to take a stamina potion, I'm going to take one Taibo Wanai village. My weight reducing armor, I still weigh a little bit too much. I'm going to deposit my armor as well. I'm just going to get my snake wheat and edrigal. So if you have a Taibo One Eye teleport scroll, use it and go to that village. If not, just uh, run to it to the village. Once you have arrived to Taibo One Eye village, let's go to the western shore of Karamja. And from here go south. We should find a couple of dead bushes on our minimap. South of the last dead bush we should find a green yellowish marshy jungle vine. Let's search this bush and wait until you found the first herb which is the uh, snake weed. Okay, just found it. Let's go north. Let's clean it on our way north. And now we'll need to go to the uh, harpy bug swarms. So at the red fence, just keep going northeast until you are at the harpy bug swarms. Near these harpy bug swarms, we should find some palm trees. A couple of them, I think two or three, should have a search option. And if you just search it, you will automatically get your herb.
So somewhere in front, I think the most western one has already a search option. And you will get your Edrigal Herb. Let's clean this one and let's run all the way back to Shiloh Village. And once we are in the Shiloh Village Bank, we are able to make our um, Bravery Potion. Okay, I've returned to Shallow Village. Let's talk to Mansoy Ray. Yes, lead me to the village. And let's now go to the bank. In the bank, let's first grab our vial of water. And once we have this, let's use our herbs on it. Then use the Adrigal herb on it. Yes, mix the two ingredients and you will have a bravery potion. Do not drink it. If you drink it now, you will need to get those two herbs again. So be sure to not touch it whatsoever. Then we should also need our Redimus notes. Our axe, our machete. Where is my machete? It is in here. Then we'll also need to have our bull roarer, our blessed gold bowl, two lockpicks, a pickaxe, doesn't matter which metal it is made of. We will also need to have our rope, our runes to cast the charge orb spell. So we will just need to have one unpowered orb and then three cosmic runes and then, and then 30 of your elemental runes depending on which charge orb spell you're going to use. Be sure to have your bravery potion, maybe one stamina potion because why not. Then also a teleportation method back to Shiloh Village. I'm going to use a Ardoin teleport as well as some coins to travel to Brimhaven and then take the card back to Shiloh Village. Besides from that, we'll also need to have some food, armor and weapon to kill three warriors of combat 100. And all three of them can be say spotted. But I'm just going to use melee. I'm going to bring my Obi Cape Dragon Chain Body and let's also take like two prayer potions. I forgot to mention it, but if you have a low strength level, like 56 or lower, you will need to have some strength potions. And if you have 52 mining or near that level, you will also need to bring your Dwarven Stouts. I have forgotten to bring those along and I have lost a level and I'm not able to get through the dungeon and I will now need to wait for my stats to be restored so if you do not want to wait just bring those potions or uh, dwarven stouts besides from that i might as well just take some food and let's exit shalavage and let's return to uh, the kazari jungle Turn our camera south, once again, between the two trees, let's cut down this bush. And now we just need to keep going south, step by step. And this is actually my favorite path to go to the Kazari jungle if we come from uh, Shallow Village. It is quite easy to remember, just between the two trees and just keep taking a step south. If my character would finally cut this tree... 
Thank you. Let's drop our locks and run west. We will now need to return to the dungeon. So let's drink a stamina potion dose and run all the way back to the uh, octagon. And let's return all the way to uh, Ungadulu in the uh, firewall octagon. Keep going west to the western shore and try to find these rocks so we can squeeze through the crevice to get back in the uh, dungeon. Okay, I've just made it. Yes, try to squeeze through the crevice. Okay, let's return to the bookcase because now we'll have actually need to go back to the room where we have used all our gems on. So let's search the Eastern bookcase. Yes, squeeze through the crevice behind it. And once again, let's try to pick lock the uh, wooden ancient gate. This depends on your thieving level. Do not skip through the dialogue. If you fail to pick the lock, just try to use the lockpick on the ancient gate again to exit the dialogue before you break your lockpick. Okay, I've heard a click sound. If you've accidentally broke your pickaxe, you have brought your second one. Okay, let's now smash to bits the boulders. I have forgotten my Dwarven Stouts. I have forgotten my Dwarven Stout, so I will need to wait for my uh, stats to be restored. Okay, after failing to smash to bits these boulders for six times in a row, so I had to wait six minutes for my stats to be restored because I forgot my fucking Dwarven Stouts. Let's try to open the uh, ancient gate that we will need to use our strength on. Alright, let's go through the uh, bat cave. Let's go to the jacked wall. We might as well just drop our rocks, we don't need those. Right click and jump over the jacked wall. Let's go back to the uh, black square on the western wall. Let's search it and go to the uh, area with the seven pulls and here we will need to go north north we should find well another ancient gate and this door will test our magic level therefore we will need to use any of the charge orb spells doesn't matter which element and just use this on the ancient gate and this will allow you to get through click continue twice and here we'll find a room filled with barrels and north we should find a winch just ignore the barrels and go to the winch use your rope on the winch and the winch will now permanently have this rope if the rope would disappear you just need to search the winch once again and it will reappear now also before you're going to climb down the winch drink your bravery potion say yes drink it and then climb down. Yeah, go down. All right, here in the next dungeon of this quest, we should find a blue hat next to us. Let's try to take it and a wizard will spawn. Let's right click and talk to him. Just skip through the dialogue and follow the path of and try to reach the bottom. Yes, it is exciting. And now you just try to uh, go around this hill and try to go to the bottom. Now this also depends on your agility level that, uh, that you will fail or successfully climb over these rocky ledges. If you would fail, you will automatically fall to the bottom and depending from what height you have fallen down, that will depend on how much damage you have taken. So depending from what height you have fallen down to the bottom, you could take up to 40 damage. So be sure to watch out for your health. Be sure that it is always above 40 when you're climbing these rocks. Once you've reached the bottom, let's go to the uh, end of the hill. And at the foot of the hill, we should find a couple of NPCs of Comet 106 called Santoyojan. Let's uh, talk to him. 
and he will start attacking us. If you're going to use magic or range at, just go to any of these rocks or stalagmites and you could use these as a safe spot. Just kill the Comet 106. And also be sure that you have one empty inventory slot when we have killed San Toyodon. Because now he will drop a shard, I think. We will need to kill three warriors around Comet 100, so we are able to get their three shards. Okay, just die now. Click to continue and you will get a chunk of crystal. Let's continue east. And somewhere around in the center of this dungeon, we should find another NPC. Here we should find Irvik Senai. This NPC has some armor with a sword and shield. Let's also kill him for the next shard. Okay, when you've killed Irvik, click to continue, we'll get your second chunk of crystal. Let's continue going east, pause those white lines on your minimap, and somewhere southeast of the dungeon we should find another mossy rock, and here's a final uh, skeleton runoff. Let's kill him for the final chunk of crystal. After you've defeated one of those three, they will stop being aggressive to you. So this is very nice for the next time we're going to get to this dungeon. Because then all three of them will be unaggressive. Okay, die already. Click to continue. And when you have your three lumps or chunks or hunks of crystal, let's go north. And we will now need to go to the northeastern part of this uh, dungeon. Here you'll find some lava on your minimap and here you'll find a furnace. Let's use one of these three parts of the crystal on the furnace and we should... And you've melted it down. Let's use our two other parts on the furnace. Click to continue two, three times and you have a hard crystal. Next, let's go back west to the center of this dungeon. Now if you would look on your minimap, these white lines actually make it look like a dragon's head. So if you would see a dragon's head with this as the jaw, this you will need to go to the eye. It is just in the center of the dungeon, you don't actually need to look at your minimap. Just go to the center of the dungeon and here you should find a mossy rock. Search it. Then right click on your heart and use it on the mossy crystal and you will make it glow. Next let's go back southeast to uh, Renalth. Just go through the uh, nose of the dragon. And here should find a gate sign on our minimap. Let's turn our camera south. And just east of the shimmering field we should find a recess. Let's right click and use our hearts crystal on the recess and this will allow us to get through the shimmering field permanently. So let's walk through it. Let's turn our camera back north and go west of this dungeon. Just pause the uh, lesser demons and just keep going west. Keep going west until you see some water. And here you will find a boulder which you can push. Let's click on it to try to push the boulder and we should now be able to spawn a Comet 187 Spirit. Let's talk to it. Let's select the second option, who is asking. Then select the third option, why are you tortured? First option, what can I do about it? Then select the first option again, I will do what I must to get the water. And he should now give you a dark dagger. So let's select the first option that you will do it. Now if you would want to have a dark dagger for yourself after the quest is completed. Because it looks quite interesting. 
Let's first drop it, push the boulder once again, talk to the spirit, then just go through the same options. Who is asking? Why are you tortured? First option, first option. And he should give you another dark dagger. Then just pick up the one that you have dropped and you now have two. Okay, when you have your dark dagger, let's make our way back to Shiloh Village. I have brought some coins and a Ardoin teleport. So from Ardoin, I'm going to take the boat to go to Brimhaven, just uh, east of the bank. And I'll see you back in the Shiloh Village bank to prepare for the next part of the quest. Okay, when we've made it back to the Shallow Village Bank, let's prepare to fight the Weakened Comet 187 Demon. First, we will need to have another Unpowered Orb, which is our last one. And we will also need to have three more Cosmic Runes and then 30 more of the Elemental Runes. So we're able to cast the Charge Orb spell once again to get back to the dungeon. Now to get back to that dungeon you don't need a rope or a bravery potion anymore, those are permanent. I will not need my empty vial or my coins, just bring some prayer potions if you need them and some food to kill the weak and come at 187. Besides from that, just bring your strength potions and your dragon stouts if you have low strength or mining levels. And I don't think I will need anything else. Let's return to Ungadulu. The, that is the NPC that is in the uh, fire octagon. So now we'll need to return to the Kazari jungle. Let's search the broken card. And once we are in the jungle, let's go all the way back to the western shore. And let's return to the firewall octagon. And I will see you back there. Okay, when we've made it back to Unkadulu in the firewall octagon, let's investigate the firewall. Because of the spell, we are able to go through. Let's right click and use a dark dagger on Unkadulu. Let's click to continue and he should give us a holy force in trade of the dark dagger. Next, we will need to return to the boulder and the spirit that has given us the uh, dark dagger. So let's investigate the firewall. Go to the northeastern corner. And once again, just go through the same path to go to the area with the seven pools. Lockpick on the wooden ancient gate. Click. Mind this. Mind this. Okay. 
Okay, the strength gate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm strong. Okay. Jumping over the jacked wall, searching the black square on the uh, wall, on the western wall. Let's go north of this area with the seven pools. Let's use any of the charge orb spells on the ancient gate. This will get us through this door. Let's go back to the winch. Search it to spawn the rope. Yes, climb down. I have no more fear, because you already drank the bravery potion. Then just don't mind the blue hat, just climb over the rocky ledge and just try to get to the bottom. If you fail this first rock, you could take up to 40 damage, so be sure to have at least 40 hit points before you're going to uh, try to cross the first rock and try to get to the bottom. Once we are at the bottom, we just need to go back to the uh, Shimmering Tears wall or something like that in the uh, southeastern corner. Now, none of the Comet 100 uh, NBC skeletons will be aggressive in this dungeon, so it is quite nice. Near the dragon's mouth, we should find the shimmering wall where we've placed our heart crystal. Let's just go through it, pass the uh, lesser demons, go back to the wall, I mean the boulder. Back at the boulder, we just need to push it. The spirit will appear. Don't select any of the four options, just click on your holy force to cast this spell and this will spawn the Comet 187 demon. You will once again drain your prayer points and now just kill the Comet 107 once again. But this time he will be weakened because you haven't slain the wizard on the top of the hill. Because we haven't helped him and we haven't stabbed the wizard with that dark dagger, he will be weakened or especially in the end of the quest he will be weakened. So let's kill this demon once again. One more. Okay, now. Okay, once the demon has been defeated, let's push the boulder from the western side east. Alright, so now we'll have to go back to Shallow Village for the final time to prepare for the final parts of this quest. I've forgotten my Ardoin teleport, so I am going to use my Ring of Dueling to go to Castle Wars. I might as well just go to Clan Wars to reset my stats. If you don't have enchanted jewelry like a dual ring or a uh, amulet of glory which can teleport you away just use your home teleport and go to any bank and once we are at the bank just uh, get yourself back to shallow village and go to the bank to prepare for the final part of the quest
Right here, packing the Shallow Village Bank. Let's bank, and we will need to have our Radimus Notes, our Bull Roar, our Rune Axe, because we will need to chop down the Yummy Tree. This will require a Rune or a Dragon Axe, else it will not work. We also need to have our Machete, our Blessed Gold Bowl. There's a Food, Armor, and Weapon to kill the Combat 187 Demon for the final time. You will also need to have your Yummy Tree Seeds. I currently have six. And to complete our quest, we will need to have a Ardoin Teleport or just any other teleportation method to the Legends Guild. And that is actually it that we will need. So I'm going to deposit my Lockpicks, my Pickaxe, my Dwarven Stouts. Let's maybe take a couple of more foods. And to run to the Kazari Jungle and as well to the Legends Guild, I'm also going to take a Stamina Potion. And let's go to the Kazari jungle. This will be the final time that we'll need to be there for this quest. Once again, boss all these zombies. Back to the jungle forester, camera south between the two trees. Go south, one square south again. Turn camera back north, a little bit more north. Chop the tree just west. So we go southwest, drop the locks and go south. Maybe actually we all need to go southwest because now we will need to go back to the uh, water pool because we have unblocked the water source. Let's go back to this pool and let's use a bull roar around here so we can call the NPC. Apparently a wolf takes a dislike to this noise. Swing the bull roar once again. Okay, Gujo has been summoned. Let's talk to him. Let's select the first option that you found the source of the spring. And I got the water. Let's use the machete on the tall reeds. So we get, get a hollow reed and use this on the water pool to fill our golden bowl. Alright, a little bit northwest of the water pool, we should find a dark brown area on your minimap. Here we should find some fertile soil. Let's right click on the yummy tree seeds and use this on the soil. And this should grow into a young tree sapling. Let's left click on the golden bowl with pure water and use this on the sapling. And now the tree should grow into an adult tree. Let's quickly use our axe on the tree to trim it down before it rots. So be sure to keep using your axe on this tree. Three times I think. Until you have a totem with a lift option. Before this totem rots as well, lift it to have it in your inventory. If you were too slow and either the tree or the totem pole has rotten, just wait like less than a minute and then they will disappear. Just get some more pure water in your blessed bowl. Use your tree seeds on the soil once again to try again and make a totem bowl and lift it in your inventory. Now if you for some reason have lost all of your yummy tree seeds, you will need to go back to Ungadulu in the uh, firewall octagon and ask him for some more tree seeds. Okay, next we will need to find one of the older totems. So let's go east. And just keep going east. I think there should be one east of the of the uh, water pool. Okay, I already found it. Just east of the water pool. Let's use our yummy totem on this darker totem pole, and this will spawn the comet 187 demon once again. And at the start of the fight, he will once again drain some of your prayer points. Let's click to continue. Okay, be sure to use Protect from Melee before using it, because he will hit you four times before you're able to do anything. So be sure to use Protect from Melee before you use the Totem Pole on the other Totem Pole.
Now because we have our Holy Force in our inventory and we have actually taken the easier or the longer route, he will not summon the three warriors that we have killed earlier in this quest and we do not need to kill them. If you for some reason do not have the Holy Force because you have stabbed the wizard, you will first need to kill all three of the uh, Comet 100 warriors each once again. And after you've defeated those, you're able to fight the Comet 187 demon. After this one has been defeated, let's use the totem pole on the darker or older totem pole once again to replace it. Sujuguo will be summoned. Let's skip through this dialogue and you will get a gilded totem. Be sure that you have completed your Redem's notes and have your gilded totem. Let's teleport ourselves back to the Legends Guild, return to Urkel and complete our quest. Let's enter the Legends Guild, go north and go to Urkel's office, open the door, let's talk to him, you should give him the notes and the gilded totem, okay once the conversation is over let's exit his office, go north and open the Legends Guild door, in here you'll find Urkel, talk to him as well as your gilded totem. Just skip through the dialogue and say yes I will train now. I are now able to choose some skills to get 7650 experience in. And you can do this four times. I'm going to choose prayer because it is the most expensive one. Now the options of the four skills are attack, strength, defense, prayer, magic, hit points, agility, herb lore, thieving, crafting, smithing and woodcutting. If you would gain a level just talk to him again and say that you want to train more and I have one more to go okay I have gained all four of the 7650 experience and I have completed legends quest congratulations you are awarded with four quest points access to the legends guild those 7650 experience in the four skills of your choice now here in the main building of the Legends Guild, you will also find your Gilded Totem. If you would use your skill necklaces or combat braces on it, you will charge them with 4 charges. And you are also now able to use your skill necklaces and combat bracelets on the Fountain of Rune to give it 6 charges. If you would go upstairs, on the second floor you will find a pole booth and an NPC as well as 2 ladders. The Eastern Ladder is just to a bank, what, because for some reason there are four bankers here. I don't know why, but it is quite helpful and I'm going to take some money, because next I'm going to climb up the Western Ladder, because here also is a shop. And if you trade Secret Urkel, you'll be able to buy Mithril Seeds here, as well as a Dusty Key to unlock the Blue Dragons in the Taverny Dungeon. The Maze Key, I don't know what this is from. Oh, this is from Melzar's Maze from the Dragon Slayer quest. Your right Shield Half and the Cape of Legends. I'm going to buy this one because this looks a bit nicer than an Obsidian Cape. Now what you also have unlocked is the ability to equip Dragon Square Shield and also access to the Kazari Jungle as well as the Vine Shortcut which requires 79 agility. This was my guide how to complete Legends Quest. Hopefully it helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.